Um, yeah, so just to introduce you boys to uh, Mr. Keelan. So he's going to be, or oh, he is one of our PE teachers, supposed to start in school after Christmas. Obviously, we, uh, we can't be in school. So for some of you guys, this will be the first time uh, coming across him on Medium, but you'll see plenty of them uh, doing a bit of uh, Mac's job there. So, you know, I'll chuck it over to you. Uh, Kilo, you jump in and just to rip, let it rip. Yeah, nice one, Val. So, uh, yeah, my name's Mr. Keelan. I, I recognise uh, a few names there uh, from my, my first stint in the school. So, obviously, I was there uh, five years ago doing doing some of my teacher training. So, I think uh, Dave Lamb would be a name there that I recognise. Anyone else there that would have come across? I think David's the only one, is it? I think so, maybe. Carl, is that the vanilla gorilla? Carl, is it? Is that the is that is that the man I'm thinking of? That's myself, yeah. That's myself. Good stuff. Good stuff. That that do you know what? That's that stuck with me. That stuck with me for years after I couldn't see a blonde kid on a rugby pitch without 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 thinking of that nickname. Uh, that that's lasted the five years, has it? Uh, yeah, on and off, on and off, on and off. On and off. Well, where is it now? Is it on or is it off? at the moment but i think he just put it back down <laughs> <laughs> he certainly is the goat the vanilla goat well we 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 we'll see where you are with it when we get back, back into scale and we'll see if it, if it's if it's on or it's off uh yeah right lads i i i get cracking there um am i right saying then just from the the two lads there that i recognize is it just david and carl that are with me from from sixth year and everyone else then is kind of scattered through what, fifth, fourth, third, second, first even. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, okay. So, so um I was kind of un- I, I I knew that I'd be getting a bit of a, a mixed bag here. Okay. So uh, I suppose the, the aim for me here really is just to get you get you thinking of a few things. Okay. So like again we're 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 online so like some of the practical stuff of you know, actually going through the technique and being able to correct some of the individual components of, of your trial uh, isn't really possible for us. Um, but, but what I want to do is I just want you to get you thinking about things that you mightn't have thought about before, okay? Because there are a lot of components, uh, believe it or not, to throwing. And I suppose the older that I get, the, the more I realize that throwing is nearly a game within a game. Okay, so like I I kind of like in throwing uh, much like darts. Okay, the only difference is in darts, you know, you hit Anton but the bullseye and you're still picking up points. When you look at at, at hooker throwing, you either hit the bullseye or you or or it's nothing, it's hit or miss really. So uh, it's a game within a game, and and I think there is a lot of criticism that 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 comes uh, with line out throwing, not always. Uh, default of the hooker okay but but blame seems to land there uh, so kind of my goal here is just to to open your mind up to to some of the components some of the physical components uh some of the mental components okay and, and i think that plays a huge part because it is a mental game and you're trying to control like mentally your approach while everything else is 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 going on around you like i remember uh thrown a few years ago and i had just come out the back of a rook and i had uh, a finger dragged across the, the the front of my eye now at the time i thought there was just a bit of muck stuck in it but i, I later found that i had 70 percent of my cornea scratched so i was getting up you know heart rate up through 180 190 i was standing in front of uh, uh standing in front of, of of my team trying to throw a uh, ball through 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 uh, through the needle okay so like like there's a lot of things that are involved in it and again as i said to you there that's kind of what i want you uh, to be thinking about and then kind of when we get it back in person or even we can do a, another workshop on this we can kind of look into those areas and hopefully by the time we have a second one over time we get back into school uh, you'll have put some thought into these uh, here as well what i will do I'm going to just uh, share my screen here with you, okay? So, uh, can you lads see that 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 presentation that I have in front of me there? I've switched off now from Microsoft Teams, so I can't actually see you fellas. But can you can you see that screen? Yeah, perfect, man. Yeah, perfect. Right. So, um, 
hooker or sucker, right? So like I was trying to think of a decent title for this, and and this is kind of what what came into 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 my mind. And the reason that I I, I went with this was from a conversation that I had actually with with my godfather, uh, the the first time I met him, which was only believe it or not, a few years ago over in Australia. And uh, we were out and there was a community barbecue and we were hanging around and there was a bit of ball being thrown around. And, uh, you know, I, I was doing everything a hooker shouldn't. I was stepping off left, stepping off right. I was scoring tries for the fun of it. And I came up to him after and we were, we were chatting around the place and he was talking to me about rugby. And he was saying to me, you know, like, well, well what, what were you like as a hooker? You know, when I was saying to him, ah, Jesus, look, I could pick a good intercept. I was decent over the ball. I was a good scrummager. And he was kind of saying, what, what, well, what's your throwing like? And I said to him, ah, you know, it, it, it's okay. And he goes, ah, so you're a sucker, so not a hooker. And I was like, well, what you, what you mean? And he was like, well, do you not know what a, what a, what a sucker is? And I was like, oh, well, not really. Like, what, what, like, what are you talking about? And he was like, well, it's someone that's easily deceived, right? And I had deceived myself into thinking that to become a good hooker or to become a good rugby player that you know like being able to run the length of the pitch being able to, to step off right and left to be able to uh, you know be good over the ball like carry strong I thought they were like the most important aspects of my game but what I was kind of neglecting to realize were my basics and like the the most important arguably for a hooker uh, is his ability to throw the ball straight into a line out and like you might be sitting there and you might be saying to yourself yeah like that 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 that's common sense right but but realistically it kind of gets overlooked and you know there, there's a lot more interesting things to do like you can hit the, the the weight room you can go out and you can you can go into training and you kind of n- neglect the skill itself and you neglect the different components of it and then what you find like over time as you kind of go up through the ranks and as you, you, you kind of start moving from schoolboy into clubs and then clubs uh, playing underage with Leinster and then going up through uh, the different levels that are there, you realize that, well, every position becomes more focused on the basics. And it's those who are able to perform at a high level at the basics that become the hookers. And it's those that don't perform their basics at a high level b- become the suckers. So like... Um, Really, for me, looking at my kind of personal rugby journey, um, I had put myself into that sucker category, and, and really because I neglected some of the basics of the game that 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 are so important uh, as a hooker, uh, really. So, um, look, I'm going to see if I can give you a, a, a bit of an insight here into into those components, get you thinking of uh, one or two things. We'll obviously talk about like the main stuff, so like our setup and what we should be looking at in our setup. Uh, but there'll also be a few areas there uh, that we will have a look at as well. Um, does anybody know? Again, I can't see the participants there, so I can't see if there's a show of hands, but if you just unmute yourself there, anybody know who that is on the screen? I do. <laughs> of course you do. Anybody know who that is? Well, before any of your time, he's a... He's a He's a commentator. Go on, Val. Enlighten us all. Sorry, my microphone was off. It's uh, Sean Fitzpatrick, mate. Sean Fitzpatrick. Sean Fitzpatrick. Arguably the second greatest hooker of all time behind Keith Wood. Would you agree with that? I'd say he's in the top five for sure. Top five. <laughs> best, best all black hooker. Yeah, best all black hooker. And like his, because like, like if, if you look at like obviously now like hook and throw and wasn't like, you know, uh, what, what he was what he was famous for. Like he was more of a leader and, you know, it, his hooker throw was, was a strong characteristic that he had. But it's more kind of the, the mentality uh, of Sean Fitzpatrick that I want to bring into this and like he would always uh, run along the belief that like I think one of his quotes was there's uh, there's no fear of failure when you're fully prepared right and and what he was preparing for his kind of what, what motivated him was he didn't want to be uh, an all-black captain 
uh, or the first all back captain to lot to lose to X team or Y team or Z team. Okay, so like he was going in to every single game, to every single training, he was going in uh, as prepared as he could be, and as a result of that preparedness, uh, it reflected in his performance, and it really reflects in in the legacy that he has. Now, I'm not saying that that you lads sitting there are going to be the next Sean Fitzpatrick, but I'm saying that you can prepare as best you can to make sure that, you know, you're comfortable in the line out and from being comfortable in the line out, you know, if ball carrying is a strength, if picking an intercept is a strength, if tackling is a strength, like you can bring them into your game after you've kind of covered these basics. Okay. So um, kind of a couple of object- objectives here that we have. Okay. So identify and analyze the physical and psychological components of line out throwing. Okay. So like if I asked you there, what was important to throwing a ball into a line out, you'd probably tell me something like, you know, your your setup's important. Uh, there was a question that came in, something about the, the the stances. I think we had split stance and just your neutral stance. Okay, so obviously you'd identify that as maybe something being important. Uh, hand placement of the ball is probably something uh, people would, would identify as being important. If you're going more into the, the intricacies of it, you'd look at kind of like your elbow placement. You'd look at finish through with the hands you would look at uh, even I suppose the, the the position of of your feet and open up in your hips and, and bringing in more glutes and more lower back okay so like there's different things there if you're looking at it from maybe the point of view of a hooker that wasn't throwing well you might say well some of the important uh, psychological so this is the mental components of the game you might say something like confidence uh, you could have something uh, like like visualization that's a mental component uh, that a lot of hookers use okay so like visualizing where that ball is going to be uh to 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 increase your success rate okay like as i said to you there like it's 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 light darts but in my opinion harder because you know it's not like you, you have to hit the bullseye every, every time that you're thrown okay so like just being aware of these things can kind of help you or, or give you uh, the tools that you need to to sort out your own trunk because it, it's really all individual like some people might lean more on the physical side it could be a technique thing it might be uh, you know maybe a couple of imbalances that they have it could be a skill deficit other people then it might be more psychological and it might be in their head okay so it could be at the back of maybe a couple of poor throws it could be maybe a lack of a routine or a setup that you have it could be that you're not actually sure how to focus yourself or 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 what you should be visualizing when when you when you are throwing the ball and all these things are important and they all kind of kind of come together to to influence the the result that we get and uh, so we'll have a look at a few of those the second one there to recognize personal physical and psychological uh, deficiencies that impact your throwing ability okay so again i suppose like hindsight is always 2020 and if i were to look at uh, some of my own personal physical and psychological deficiencies and um, imbalances would have been a huge thing so like i went from uh, 85 kilos to 106 kilos uh the space of a year and a half two years to meet the requirements for for senior rugby and and in doing so I picked up a, a huge amount of imbalances and especially imbalances uh, in my back and in my lats. And like th- that, that's a, a big issue if you're trying to throw a ball straight. And it might be something that you're even aware of, you're, you're even conscious of, but it's something small that you could maybe implement in, into a warm up that would just reduce the likelihood of that happening. In terms of psychological deficiencies, uh, definitely confidence at, at, at times uh, was an issue. So, like, I think another question in came there about uh, about accuracy to the tail. Okay, I, I find that if your technique is solid, uh, accuracy to the, to the tail is just a confidence thing, or it's just building the right, uh, the kind of the right the right mental block so you can get. Like, basically, it's it's only only 15 meters so if you can hit five if you can hit 10 there, there's no logical reason why you can't progress to that 15 and most people stumble there uh, because of a mental block uh, rather than a physical block that they have okay so to be able to recognize those yourself and then the final one uh, to apply strategies to address your physical and your psychological deficiencies so uh, obviously there kind of we're limited on that third one so we're limited on the strategies that we can use uh, in person, a lot easier, okay, because again, it, it is physical and it is psychological, okay, so the physical ones we, we can address uh, on site, no bother, 
okay, over 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 the internet here, over over Microsoft Teams. It's a bit of a different story, okay. But we can recognize what they are. Uh, you can look at then maybe introducing your own strategies. I'll talk through a few which are here, um, and you can we can have a look at some of the mental stuff as well, which which will be easier to address uh, over Microsoft Teams, okay. So. Uh, hooker or sucker okay so the the physical and the psychological one so like again like you you could have an extensive list here but i've i've kind of narrowed it down to what i think are the most important in both categories okay so like if we look at the physical stuff like you physically your setup okay so like when i was looking at my setup i'd always have uh the same setup every single time i bring myself from the bottom right the way through to the top Okay, so like if I was looking to set up, I look at setting up with my with my heels on the line to give myself that little bit of a, a psychological uh, advantage. So I, I taught myself that I, I was throwing a shorter distance. My feet would just be uh, shoulder width or part or, or sometimes uh, a little further, just just really depended uh, on how I was feeling, the kind of imbalances that I had. I would then just point my toes out ever so slightly to bring in the glutes, bring in the lower back. Uh, and again, like a lot of these came into my, my psychological preparedness because I, I, I thought that this would 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 increase my throwing ability uh, or, or my accuracy even. If you start pushing up then, I, I was looking at my grip. Okay, so like obviously the way I thought about it was, I thought about it that true, like if you look at Jerry there, true, true, uh, what I'd call kind of your cocked position. Okay, so from going from your cocked position to your shoot position, which was like the the, the release of it. So if you think of of like a gun, right? So if you think about a gun, you have your, a, a gun strapped to your side. You would take that gun out, which would be your pre-cocked position. So if we talk about our hooker throne, would be just a ball in front of you. You'd move to your cocked position to what he has there, what he has there. And then you look at your shoot position and your release, okay, which would obviously be be throwing the ball and where your hands finish. So like when I was going through this, I would go from the feet, I'd move up, I'd then have a look at, at my grip. And I always thought to myself, well, the power comes from just, just bringing my hands through, okay? So from extending through my elbows and through my fingers. So I was aware that was where my power was coming from. So like that question about the tail of the line out, uh, I'd be working on how efficient that was from the point at which it's cocked to finishing with my fingers flat out. Uh, in terms of, uh, so, that, so that, that'd be my power. In terms of uh, my spin, it would always have been my overhand. So I was always conscious that my overhand was the one uh, that, that was going to generate my spin for me and that my underhand then was, was kind of, well, what was giving me my direction okay and i was always conscious or, or not, not even always but as i kind of got older i was conscious of making sure that as i was throwing that my my underhand my thumb was finishing down and, and where i wanted to go and all of these things they definitely made a difference um but i suppose n nearly i'd say i I'd come across them i come across them too late okay like if if, if i had, had realized some of these things uh, were impacting on my throwing ability. If I realized that that these things were as important as they are, and and I approach throwing uh, with a game within itself, uh, you know, I I, I think I, I would have got uh, more return out of it. Um, and then you know we I talk about the 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 pre cock the cock uh, and the shoot position. Okay, so like a gun, and, and we'll go through that through that uh, maybe when when I see it lads. Uh, in person okay but that was kind of the setup that i was going through uh, i know I, I just kind of rushed it there that there, there, there's a good few bits involved but again we can kind of look at this uh, this is what i think is massively underrated okay so skill mastery right so like take take the rugby ball aside uh from this for a second and what does it come down to well it comes down to throwing like that's what you're doing right so throwing is a movement skill like like that's just that's just a fact that's just simple as it's a throwing skill so like before you can get good at a specific throwing skill you have to become better at throwing in general right now like obviously you, you can bring it more so towards your line out throwing okay so obviously like an overhead throw and following through 
you know, with the right technique and an overhead throw is going to be more specific uh, uh, to your line out. But even stuff like like passing off your 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 both hands and, and getting your 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 finishing positions and, and getting that follow through is all going to be really important because it's a skill and that skill will carry over. So like that skill mastery there and uh, that that for me, that's huge. Uh, especially for the younger lads like there's there's probably a couple of lads from first second third year like skill mastery there like if i was saying to to my first and second years there what you should be looking at i'd say get out and be throwing tennis balls over your head as much as you physically can and when you're doing that just make sure that you're you're mirroring mirroring somewhat what you would see with your hooker throw Okay, so mirror, you know, nice tucked elbow, uh, extending out the elbow, extending through the tips of the hand and finishing where you want that ball to end up. And again, that's just going to be through repetition, 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 repetition. Uh, I think there was another question in there uh, about how many reps would you do every single day? And not so much how much you do every day, but how much would you do so you yourself can continue to practice that skill right and i think variance is is a really important thing so like not just actually hook or throwing but coming back to that whole skill mastery and you know like passing off left hand passing off right hand just with your general passing skills uh, overhand throwing off left overhand throwing off right um, and what that does it, it develops that skills but it also reduces uh, imbalances okay so like imbalances that you might have between strong hand and weak hand okay so like if i'm looking at my younger fellas there i'd say skill mastery just get out and, and throw anything like throw anything throw anything and try mirror it um as best you can as as what you're trying to do when you're when you're trying to throw into a line out and then for the young fellas as well like setup setup is hugely important and, and we'll, we'll come to that in a minute that's the, the kind of the take home i'm going to leave with you fellas uh for my older lads uh so so uh cal and david there like i'm not sure how much you fellas have have been hitting the gym but i know as you get older uh it becomes something uh either either rightly or wrongly it kind of becomes uh, a, a priority because you know ultimately kind of the way rugby goes and it does go through phases but 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 there's a huge emphasis put on size and um, like that that's fine if you know, you're you're a you're a tight head or you're a loose head or you're a second row or you're or you're a back row and you don't have any of these uh kind of like fine skills to perform. Like hooker throwing is is a fine skill. Like it's in my opinion tougher than tougher than kicking is. Like you, you have a, a huge radius when you're kicking uh that you can kind of you, you can miss by a few centimeters here or a few centimeters there and it's still gonna go over the bar. When you're throwing you move you 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 miss a few centimeters to your left or a few centimeters to your right and, that, and that's a crooked throw um, and and flexibility there and flexibility really like through the lats uh up through the the triceps and um, would be kind of the, the two main areas where uh, people become or kind of lose that flexibility and again can have that that knock-on effect uh i i'll rip through the is here so communication uh really important okay so just after there's a good line of communication uh like and i'm talking about like verbal communication here so like you can uh either either have a have a preset call you can have a call that comes from within your line out uh or you can have uh kind of like just like a, a backup or, or a safety option for you there but i think communicating that um is really important like like have yourself a get out of jail card um and make sure and, and like that's you know come, come over into the the mental skills uh, as well but but i i think that's important just to give yourself uh, that kind of get out of jail uh, and then the breath work there uh i'm not sure if anyone plays uh plays plays tennis or plays golf uh, i'd be a big fan of table tennis myself uh breath work jesus christ the difference when you are striking a ball or when you're throwing a ball into a line out and you have control of your breath okay so uh, obviously as you're in that kind of pre-cock stage you're taking in not a deep breath but you're, you're you know you're taking in a reasonable breath and then as you get through that cock stage and then into that shoot and release your breath should be going through it should be seamless it should be working together okay it's, it's much like 
when you're weightlifting, like you'll take a, a deep breath. And then as you're trying to shift that weight or as you get to the, the kind of toughest part of that, 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 that lift, you're, you're, you're breathing out and you're, you're exhaling. Okay. And you should be carrying that over uh, into your hook or throne as well. And um, your mental stuff, your psychological stuff. So confidence, I, I, I said, is a big issue. Um, or it can be a big issue, especially off the back of, you know, something like a rainy day. Uh, you know, there's, there's some, some serious second rows as well flo- floating around these days. Like there's some serious height, even in schools rugby. Um, and, you, you know, you, you see, so you walk out into a pitch and you see, you know, like a, a, a six foot 10 fellow walking around and you, you see that they're using them tactically in, in a good position. Like that could affect your confidence if you're coming off the back of a couple of games, you know, where you might have had a couple of skew line outs or, or you kind of overthrown or under for, for whatever reason it is. And I think there's there's ways that you can kind of, you can, you can get around it. So visualization, I think is really important. Okay, and this comes kind of from your knowledge of the line out. So like, do you know, uh, do you know your cause inside and out? And can you then visualize where that jumper is going to be? And you're nearly picturing him in his, in his, in his top end position. And you're just picturing, picturing the ball there. Um, even if you take visualization uh, even out from that and you bring it kind of before the game, like you're just thinking to yourself, you know, if this is called, where, where, where am I looking to put it? Am I looking to put it on, you know, his inside shoulder? Am I looking to put it on his head? Am I actually looking to put him uh, up when he's fully extended? And even just by just running through those in your head, you, you'd be surprised at the difference that it makes. Um, goals there, uh, important just from the sense uh, that like y- you should never have, well, I don't think anyway that you should ever have uh, a goal that's revolved around I want to hit six out of eight of my line outs today. I want to hit eight out of eight of my line outs today because unfortunately it's 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 not just you that this relies on. But what I'd be doing is I'd be having um not kind of outcome based but like process based goals. So like I, I've gone through my my routine. I have for every single line out I have been able to focus uh, and use my breath work. I have uh, made sure in the lead up to the game that I've gotten three good practices in this week, whether it's, you know, just your basic skills with the tennis ball or whether it's it's focused on line out throwing. So maybe five, 10 minutes before or after a training session. I think those goals around the process um, are a lot more beneficial than the goals necessarily that, that are outcome based. Um, so so I, I, I and they keep you accountable as well, which I think is important. Uh, the routine, again, from a mental side of things, like if you're keeping something uh, the same every single time, uh, it reduces what we what we call decision fatigue. And decision fatigue is, is basically just the more decisions your mind has to make, the, the tireder it becomes. So like if you have a routine there, and you're in the, the the 50, 60, 70 minute of a game and you've made hundreds, if not thousands of decisions in that game that you're either conscious of or unconscious of, having a routine there takes that that that, that fatigue and decision making about your setup, about the process that you're going through. Um which I which I think is which is is hugely beneficial for you. Um mantra, okay. So like I kind of always just go uh with the mantra of you know, one and done. Like that was my mantra. Like I, I, I do one line out. That was it over. That was a game in itself. You know, I either won it or I lost it. And then I moved on, go to the next line out, one and done. Either won it or lost it, moved on. Then one and done. And, and kind of, it gets you out of that kind of mindset of oh, I've missed this last one. I've missed two before that. Um, and you can just focus uh, more on the one that you have. And again, communication kind of linking back in. Uh, to what we had uh, there before. Um, I'll just stop there before I go on because I've, I've three or four minutes left there. Um, does anybody have any questions on those uh, physical or psychological components? Because I, I do realize that I have been uh, shy talking there for, for a, good, a good 15, 20 minutes. Uh, how do you know you have an incumbent balance? Uh, good question. Uh, very simply, who who's who's that? I still can't see the participants there. Who's that? Uh, Liam Granville. Liam, uh, great question. Um, so what I do? Do you have a foam roller at home? 
Yeah. Yeah. So what I do with the foam roller is I put it uh, at your mid back, and then from because you got to think about it here, right? And and Jerry's a great example because Jerry's built like a, a brick shit house, right? But but being built like a brick shit house also has its disadvantages because what he'll probably find is he's probably tight all in the top of his back here. So if you put a foam roller in your mid back there. And if you just keep engage your core, keep your core nice and tight, and then just raise your hands overhead. And all that you want to do is you want to feel if you have really good mobility there. And one side might go a little bit uh, further down than the other, or they might be balanced. Now, um, that's how you could check it. If you wanted to go a little bit further, you could have well, your, your mom, granny, brother, or sister come in and just with the, the the literally just the tips of their fingers just push down the palms of your hands and again just see if one side is stiffer one side is tighter uh, than the other and that will be a, a really good indication for you yeah thanks any other questions there no lovely stuff okay so again like these these be things i i leave you think about and i let them stew for a little while uh before we come back to uh what i will kind of finish off there is i'll just finish up uh, on the setup okay and i'll just have a quick uh chat about the setup and we'll kind of uh we'll leave it at that then all right so um like this 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 in my opinion is is your your optimal setup okay so we're just uh shoulder width apart from each other all right and then from there you can even see and i think this is this this is hugely underrated but like that little turnout uh, of the toe there and all that little turnout of the toe does is it means you can actively engage your your glutes more and that is effectively where your power is coming from okay so like uh, if you think of uh if you think of performing like a, a back squat or, or a front squat uh most people get more purchase when they just turn that that, that those toes out just, just ever so slightly. And the reason that you get more purchase is because you're opening up your hips and you're able to bring those muscle groups in. So like if I was looking at his setup there, shoulder width, little turnout. We can see he's got soft knees here, so uh, a slight bend in them. Uh, from there, elbows are relaxed. Um, the grip again, like I'd always say, you know, you want your 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 overhand to be controlling the spin. You want your underhand to, to be controlling direction, and then your 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 kind of power or or where you're going to get the distance from is coming from uh, this coil here. Okay, so like uh, again, when, when I when I see you lads in person, I can I can go into it a little bit more. But I always say, you know, if I was breaking it down kind of just in into into two parts so i break it up into like the setup and then the throw itself so like the setup i'd be uh feet shoulder with the part toes just a little bit out little bend in our knees here uh, as i was coming up then I'd, I'd have a grip on the ball here first and again i just find a comfortable overhand position find a comfortable uh underhand position and then from here i take it into uh, my actual throw and then okay so this that that that'd be kind of like my, my my prep first okay so like the feet the knees uh, and the ball placement here once we come up to this section uh that would be uh for me what what i, what I would call the the pre-cock okay so uh it's like think about it like a like a trigger on a gun right so like when you when you cock your gun that's the it loading that's it taking uh, or, or kind of get, getting ready to take that shot. Okay, so uh, that position there, I, I, I call the pre-cock. When we come then in behind our back here, we're we're coiling up, we're we're we're, we're storing that energy, wait to throw the ball uh, in that cock position, and then I just have my shoot and release, and my shoot will just be focusing on again my simple mental cues would be overhand, uh, would just be for the spin. So all I'd be thinking was, it's just following through with my overhand. I'd be just thinking of thumb down with my underhand, and then I'd be.
this year. I had three questions there. Um, who was the split stance and the neutral stance? Uh, I was. That, that was you, Ben. What do you, what do you use personally? Uh, I prefer split stance, but uh, Val doesn't approve of it. Yeah, and, and like, I, do you know what? Like, I, 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 I be in the same boat. I don't. What, what, what's your rationale for for not having this this split stance, Val? Uh, my one. Oh, Ben, can you remember why um, why I said I didn't like the split stance? I don't know if you can remember. Uh, I can't really. I was just doing it, and you told me to stop because actually no, it was because uh, the other team could tell when I was going to throw. Uh, there was a trigger point, yeah, no. So my main point with that, and that's just around, and if you uh, some of the first and second year hookers are wondering the same thing, Ben's basically asking, can I put one foot of the uh, in front of the other? And you often will when you're younger because you get more power, or you feel like you can get more power when you swing into your throw. Uh, my main issue with it, uh, Ben, if you can remember, was actually balance. So often when you do um, when you do a split stance, you have one foot behind the other, and it's just a really narrow base. So what like uh, Mr. Keelan was talking about, the shoulder width apart actually ensures that we're really well balanced and we've got a really solid platform to launch um, and get, gain energy from the ground all the way up into our glutes and then through our uh, core and out our arms. Yeah, like, and and I I I really agree with that. Like it, like a lot of it's like 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 ultimately, like I've just gone through a half an hour of like arguably going into into way too much detail there. And um, because when you think about it, all you're doing is you're standing on a line, you're throwing a ball straight to someone who's catching it no more than fifteen meters in front of you. Okay, so like realistically, it's it's one of the simplest things you could probably do on 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 a rugby pitch. But then on the flip side of that, you know, it's not. And uh, I, I really would, I'd echo there what, what, what Val said. And I think it's just like a lot of it's just like if you can, like you're throwing a ball straight. So if you can keep everything in your body straight and you can make sure that, you know, your, your feet are straight, you can make sure your elbows are straight, your hands are finishing straight. You can make sure that. And again, like we talked about imbalances there with your flexibility. Like if I have, uh, if, if, my, my, if my spine, if my thoracic spine is tight, and there's there's a, a group of muscles pulling in there. What you'll find is that's going to have uh, it's, it's going to cause imbalances further up your chain. So that might just even shorten your 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 range of movement in your left arm or your right arm. So like all you're trying to do is get like that perfect symmetry and get that perfect alignment. So again, like it's just throwing a ball in the straight line. But the straighter you are and the straighter that you can keep uh, your body, the easier that's going to be. Um, I would say, Cal, you're, 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 said you were in first year, Cal, did you? I'm oh, not sorry, Cal. It was Ben, sorry. No, third year. Third year. Um, yeah, look, you like third year, third year's a funny one. Like, I'd always say, you know, if you started with a split stance and you were like fifth or sixth year, you know, like, like ultimately your body's hugely adaptable and if you're thrown at a split stance and you've got good return out of a split stance like like work away like that's what your body has adjusted to that's what it has adopted to um but if if you're looking at like kind of long term and, and like really getting the mileage out of it long term like i'd be saying you know have a look at that especially when we're in lockdown and, and like your body is going to regress and you know you're going to forget skills like this is a great chance to go from that split stance uh, into that neutral stance and really just kind of try whack it away now and, and try to bed that in as best you can. Um, second question there, how many reps throwing a day? Who was that? Uh, that was me. Who was that? Tom? Uh, Tom Bairn. What's your story, Tom? What year are you in? Uh, second year. Second year. Um, yeah. what, where, where, does that, where does that question come from? What's, what's, what's your reason behind asking me that question? Well, like, yeah. I usually go on the I back. Usually back, go on the back, back skip, like skip, but I don't know, I don't know like, how many I should do each day. It depends each day. Yeah, and like the, the one thing that I'd say to you about, uh, like, like, is it something that that you were looking to do every single day? Uh, yeah, you see during lockdown. Yeah, during lock. Yeah, perfect. And like, what what I'd say to you about that is. Like you, you're you're always better, and this is like kind of coming into your kind of like your your psychological components of it. Like if if every day is something that you can do, 
and you know that it's easy it's accessible to you and you can do whatever five a day is loads do you know what i mean because like yeah. five a day over seven days is 35 throws a week if you're doing 35 throws a week over the course of a month six months a year like that's a huge amount of value and um, but but i wouldn't be setting yourself something that you know i'm going to do 50 throws today and then you only end up doing five or you only end up doing 10 or 15 and then you actually come out of what is like a really productive use of your time thinking to yourself ah you know i said 50 and i've only done 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 20 or i've only done 15 and i must say tom i did find myself in in that rabbit hole a little bit after like you know like a game where you know and it mightn't even be my fault it could have been like a lack lack of lift there could have been uh, it could have been a, a, a bad day with conditions and i'd say to myself right this week i'm gonna get 100 throws in every single day before college or i'm gonna get gonna get up early and i'm gonna get 100 throws in and you know life gets in the way and, and then you're coming out the end of that week and you've hit like four out of six or four you know out of seven days that you're gonna say and you actually walk away thinking to yourself ah like that that was an unproductive week so just be be careful how 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 you phrase it for yourself like i'd be kind of saying like get out as often as you can and just throw whenever you can and come back to come back to the basic skills so like not even uh, specifically line out throwing but just even standing against the wall and keeping the elbow straight and finishing through with the hand with a tennis ball and getting like 20 of those off left 20 of those off right the next day you might come out and do 20 passes off left 20 passes off right and then the third day you might just do 20 hooker throws and if you're able to do that you know how often and wherever you know you're, you're absolutely laughing there but but I, i'd say you know make it achievable and um, make it achievable and, and let yourself build up into it so start small really is, is the advice that i have for you there but i wouldn't say that there's not a set number it's kind of whatever you feel like you're getting a good return on um, and then the last one there, um, I had accuracy, accuracy to the tail. It was accuracy to the tail. As David Das. David, how are you, David? Good. What year are you in? Uh, fifth. Fifth. Where does where does where does this where does this question come from? Uh, just fine when I'm trying to come back, it can skew out, yeah, like a bit too often, probably. It just like falls, you know, kind of uh, towards the end, it kind of skews out to the side a bit too much, kind of just tapers off, it? yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah. So, like, you either not, not, it doesn't under throw now or or over throw, it just kind of goes left or it goes right, yeah, kind of, yeah, tapers off, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, so like, um. That, that that just comes in my opinion that's like that's like that's a form thing right so like if you think about like kind of like the front and the middle of your line out and you're throwing that ball in like that ball is traveling what maybe five six seven meters you start going to the tail you're getting eight nine ten like it's never gonna go the full 15 really like it'll probably go like four 13 14 meters but what you got to think about is the further it goes and the longer it's in the air, the poorer your technique, the more that's going to show up. If you get me, so like if you, if you think about it like a graph, right? So like if 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 you say throw, and it's only going to the middle, the chances are when it's going to the middle, that ball is still on like that upward trend. So it's like rising, 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 and it hasn't hit just like the the peak of its power yet. But then when it's going past the middle and it's going to the tail, the chances are it's kind of just at that point where it's just tapering off a little bit. And that's where you see the kind of deficiencies in your skills coming. So I'd even say there, uh, give give your, your what, what hand do you, David, you left or you right-handed? I'm left-handed. Left-handed. So you're the same as myself. I'd say, and your left hand would be your, your overhand, would it? Yeah. Yeah, I... Yeah, try, try, try thumb down. Try thumb down with your with your underhand. Okay. I uh, like and and really emphasize that and and just like your passing drills, like when you're following through and you're pointing where you want to go. Same with your throwing. Just make sure that it's thumb down, and I guarantee you, you'll you'll see a lot of return. Uh, would would I be right in saying that you're probably seeing a two 
too far too far right, are you? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Too far right. Yeah. yeah, too far right. That's like I, I like I, I reckon that's 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 uh that's underhand come down because too far right is just like uh, uh your your left hand being too dominant, and when you're trying to front or middle. There's enough power there that it's going in a straight line, but once it hit, hits that kind of like maximal point on a curve, okay, so where like like power output put is, is at its highest, you start then seeing as the power is coming down, you start seeing like the, that that kind of deficiency in form. So without going thumb under, you start seeing it veer off to your right hand side. So give thumb down a go, and I'd say just just try to bring that into your routine as as best you can. Thanks. No problem. Uh, anybody else there? I'm conscious I've probably taken you a, a bit further than than any you know than any of us would like to have been here. <laughs> Anything there, lads? Um, I t I tell you what I'll ask you to do, right? Um, would it be possible to have you film yourself with your setup and? going through maybe three throws is that something we could look at file and i could just give them a bit of feedback yeah so boys as part that's yeah that was going to be one of our takeaways fellas it's not that hard get out there all of you have phones uh record three throws as as uh mr kellen said make sure you got a full body um width on it so a uh, length on it sorry so we can see from your feet uh to above your head on the cock and see if you can throw them uh, over the phone towards somebody and then see if you can get a shot from the side as well. I, I'd say that there, that, that, that angle there would be, would be, would be probably your best. What, what do you think? For... Yeah. Happy days. If you can get it, uh, I just, I just need one person to, to hold it from you. Are you talking about the one with Cody or the one uh, John McKee shot from behind? No, I did this one here with, with Cody yeah. Taylor. Sweet. Yeah, so just, okay, yeah, just shoulder or right shoulder. Yeah. So, so if you can see the one. angle, lads, if you can get on a field and do it, that's great. Just, I thought if you're in the backyard, if you can draw yourself a line so you've got something to measure yourself on, something straight, um, so we can go back to it and make sure that we're throwing square as well onto a, to, to a target as opposed to just throwing at anything. Yeah, happy there. Sound awesome. Um, is it oh, the the Ukilo? You good? Yeah, good. That's me. Perfect, boys. That's some really really helpful stuff there, Kilo. Even I'm sitting there um, going, oh, actually, I might go out there and learn it myself. Uh, <laughs> this lockdown, I did goal kicking last lockdown, and uh, we went all right. So, I, lads, I think uh, one of the big takeaways uh, that, that Mr. Keelan was talking about is around the skill mastery things. Like, I took up golf and goal kicking the last uh, lockdown, but a heap of that, like, if you slow and break your process down, fellas, then you'll realise that like, actually acquiring a skill um, and, you know, conquering a skill is actually pretty basic once you've you've figured out one one skill and you've unlocked that. Then you can apply all of the, the, the mechanics all of the breakdown process you can like most iphones if you've got one has a slow mo mode in it you can film yourself and you can start to get really really technical on it but really at the end of the day lads it's just consistency uh like like uh kilo said um i think it was talking to tom you know it's not about murdering yourself with 100 reps in one day it's just being consistent going out there trying and being really intentional lads about trying those new things if it's darcy making sure that your underhand really does you know, rip the thumb out, emphasizing that in your five reps that you're going to do today. Um, but each day you're out there trying to make a change. And if I can encourage you lads, just to video yourself doing it, not for anyone else, but purely for your own feedback. Because it's really, you know, it's really hard when you're training by yourself to, to get improvement if you're not getting um, feedback. And it's the first feedback you can get is actually by watching yourselves and being really critical. Then when you need a little bit more um, advice on it, then you can start sending it.